And now the Hangout is live. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Today is August something. Uh, it's uh, August 14th already, and you're hanging out with my community manager, the community built by, for, and managed by community managers. As always, you can hang out with us on Twitter as well, where we have a little chat going on at hashtag CMGR Hangout, uh, where I know a bunch of you guys are watching, so hey, what's up, Twitter? Uh, and don't forget, you can tweet us questions, and we'll bring them into the panel as we go today. Uh, if you love what you're seeing and maybe you have a great idea for a topic, please head over to our website at mycmgr.com. Click the little button that says participate. Fill out the form if you want to join us, if you have friends that want to join us, if you just want to say, hey, Brew, I love your hair. Um, we get those forms, and it's really your ideas and your compliments that keep these Fridays going. So, uh, all right, what do we have for you this week? Well, it's building B2B communities. Um, and uh, so B2B, B2C, H2H, to -H, F2F, to -F, uh, there's probably a bunch of different acronyms we've all used. Um, and when we first do a glance at uh, the difference between B2B and, whew, and B2C, things seem pretty identical. See, Sherry, you told me there were no tongue twisters this week. Um, but when you look at uh, the community members and your target audience and really think about your objectives in these different types of communities, I think you'll end up finding a few differences, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'll shut up now, and I'll let all of these uh, beautiful people down below here introduce themselves, uh, starting with Trish. Hey, Trish, what's going on? Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Trish Fontanella. I'm here from sunny Boston, Massachusetts, and I am the Global Director of Community at Startup Institute. Uh, Startup Institute's an eight-week program for people looking to change their careers. Our students are, this program are actually 17 to 67, which is pretty awesome, and we do the hard skills, which is marketing, uh, web development, web design, and sales, and we also use soft skills as well, so emotional intelligence. Uh, so my community is made uh, as uh, B2C, we also work with partner companies, so B2B, and then I was also recently the VP of Community and Customer Experience at a video app called VSAP, and that was a B2B community. Hey everybody, I'm Sherry Rohde, and I co-produce CMGR Hangout, and my community manager, as well as am the community manager for Magento, which is an open source e-commerce platform. Hey everybody, I'm Krista, and I am a customer success manager at uh, Spark Central, which is a social media uh, customer support platform, but uh, venturing out from there as well. And uh, I have been in the community world for, uh, gosh, three and a half years now out in San Francisco. Hey, guys. Uh, Dom, I am a co-host here uh, with Sherry and Brew for my community manager, um, as well as a community manager for uh, Be the Change Revolutions. Um, I'm coming to you from uh, a nice and hot um, another 90 degree day in Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm really excited to chat about this today. It's going to be fun. Hey everyone, um, I'm Barack. I'm coming to you guys from Seattle. Um, I am currently the one of the community managers for the Google Small Business Community, which is B2B, um, though we do have some consumers in there, but we're a community for small businesses. Um, and in the past, I've also worked with Fluke, um, which was also B2B, and um, I'm a freelancer, so you guys will see me on different communities all the time. So um, I am excited to be joining you guys for another community manager hangout. It's going to be great. Hey, everyone. I'm Allie Greer. Uh, oh, I don't have a lower third on, but I'll do it in a second. Um, I am the City Marketing Manager at Zumper in San Francisco. Uh, Zumper is an app to help you find a rent apartment. Um, and I used to be a Community Manager at Scoop It, also in San Francisco. So I'm kind of, uh, experience, I've kind of experienced uh, both B2B and B2C, so I'm super pumped to talk to everybody. And this is uh, my first Community Manager Hangout, so I'm really excited. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, it's my first community manager hangout as well. Uh, my name is Alan Bush. I am a uh, community manager at uh, Rackspace, and I'm broadcasting live from our uh, headquarters. We call it the castle. Uh, it's, a, it's an old abandoned mall that we recycled and turned it into our headquarters. And uh, I, uh, I work in our community, and I actually host a couple of hangouts here at Rackspace as well. Great to be here. 
Really excited. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, my name is Brew, the director of Awesome at Be the Change Revolutions, um, and a co-producer here at my CMGR um, and CMGR Hangout. Um, so let's just jump right in the first question. Some of you already answered this, um, but I'm really interested in like, have you worked with B2B communities, uh, B2C communities, or both? And Allie, you said you've done both, right? Yeah, I was gonna jump in there. So I have uh, actually, uniquely, when I first started at Scoop It about uh, three or four years ago, it was B two C. It started out as a content curation platform that you know hobbyists and stuff like that, people who were just like sharing on whatever they wanted. It's very B two C. Um, then once we realized what people were actually using it for, which was content marketing, we were like, oh, there's an opportunity there. So we kind of had this, like, I used to jokingly call it the identity crisis, but, like, you know, it was it was like, what are we? Um, <laughs> uh, so we kind of, like, did that switch to B2B, and um, it was really interesting for me because I really only had experience with B2C, and it's more different than you can possibly imagine. In my opinion, I think it's like really different. Like, I, I guess the basics are the same, but I think like the application is just like so unique for B two B because it's like obviously different objectives and things like that. And now at Sumper, I'm back in B two C, which is like really interesting to me, and I'm a little all over the place, but I'm excited to kind of see like how else they overlap. Well, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, you know, uh, at Rackspace, we're obviously uh, dealing with uh, both uh, just individual consumers that are that are hosting sites or something. Or, uh, but but the majority of people that we work with are uh, going to be uh, acting on behalf of a business. And I say acting on behalf of a business because I I really think that there are definitely some you know intrinsic differences between B two B and B two C. But uh, you know, businesses can't act on their own, right? So uh, they need people to to interact, and so you know, as a community manager, we are interacting with communities or with 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 other uh, with, with people, and uh, those people, you know, you, you got to treat them like people, and they have their own uh, you know needs uh, and and. Uh, lacks in their, uh, you know, a lack of understanding in certain things, and so that's what we want to. Um, that's what we really want to do is is make a interpersonal connection with one of the uh, one of the consumers that is acting on behalf of the business. And I think that's, you know, once you do that, once you're helpful to uh, to those people that the people that that are coming to you for help and uh, and are part of that community, I think that really helps them to uh, represent their business and to uh, you know further your business relationship with them. So I'll jump in really quick too. Um, when I first started as a community manager or figuring out that I wanted to be a community manager, I worked with BTC all the time. We I worked with smaller startups that were BTC and in the last year and a half or two years I guess now, I love working with small businesses and B2B has been great, like especially with the work that we're doing at the Google Small Business Community, but also the work I've done in the past with other companies. Um, helping small businesses help themselves as a B2B company, B2B community is so amazingly fulfilling and so inspirational that um, I kind of I feel like moving forward now, unless another opportunity comes along, B2B is definitely going to be like my strength and what I want to do. I'm a B2C community manager of my personal brand, so I guess you know I can still keep it with both. Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, so I'm kind of like Ali, where my last company, VSnap, we actually started B2C, and I was, um, I will fully admit, there's some crying involved when I when we when I found out that we went from B2C to B2B because I actually got hired um, based on my social media, and the CEO at the time was like, "You seem like a really great voice for us to be a B2C company," um, and it was these videos that like grandma would send to Billy to like say hello and then we realized businesses were jumping on and using them to send them to their customers. Um, and then when I realized um, that I, I am that person that says age to age, like a hippie, um, that the decision makers are people, they're not logos that are making decisions, actual people within the company. And um, talking to them and seeing what they needed was really, really fun for me. Um, and then at Startup Institute now, um, we actually have a couple different communities. So our students 
which turn into alumni, so there's some B2Cness, um, but also to help our program grow, we have a lot of partner companies, so we do some work with those companies, and we have different marketing and things that go out on the B2B end. Uh, but I think that, and this actually might go into another question that's coming up, um, the, actually no, I will save that for later. <laughs> All right, and I'll, I'll pop in as well. Um, I started at MotionLoft, which is a pedestrian and vehicle traffic analytics company for the community space, uh, B2B. Uh, so that was really awesome and exciting. Uh, switched over to B2C when I worked with SHIP, uh, getting that off the ground back when there were five of us um, starting up that company. And uh, was a, a customer of Spark Central's and moved over to the customer success side of things which uh, Sherry and I have talked about in person a little bit, um, how that overlaps with community a lot, uh, but basically with customer success being a little bit more directly uh, accountable for uh, adoption and uh, the success of the, the customer throughout their entire life cycle, not just um, are they you know, still involved, but are we going to be able to you know, keep them as, as customers in a, a SaaS environment. Tom, did you want to jump in there at all? Sure. Um, I uh, I have done a lot of work. Um, more recently, it feels very B2C, um, just when it comes to community management. I find it really interesting, though. I think that when you work for an agency, um, or at least sort of the agency way that, that BTC is set up, or if you're a freelancer, um, you have this sort of back and forth where you know you're working B to C quite a bit, but then as an agency or as a freelancer, you're going back to the client, and that has a very B to B feel to it. Um, I did uh, B to B a bit um, with the last major community management job that I had, um, but I you know I, I know that this is it's going to play into question two, um, but I do see a, a lot of that overlap um, of you know best practices moving back and forth with them. And then, you know, to get all hippie and Brian Kramer, as you were talking about, Trish, you know, that H to H idea, um, I think really is sort of the, the middle part of that Venn diagram of B2C or, or B2B. So, Sherry, I'll, I'll just leave it right there for you. Where, where, what do you want to talk about next? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, just going to go back way, way, way back to Alan's answer and kind of throw out um, that that's so true, like in community or not, you're not interacting with a logo anyway, you're interacting with an individual representing that brand. So I think like in e-commerce it's easy to look at differences between business to business, um, business to business or business to community because the platform has to be different for different needs, but when it comes to relationship building there's so many similarities. Um, which brings us to <laughs> question two, which is what do you view as the biggest difference between building B2B and B2C communities? I can. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I um, I've, like I said, I've worked with B two C a lot in B two B, and um, the similarities are it's relationship building. Um, I feel like one of the biggest challenges when I jumped into B two B was um, honestly remembering that the the people that you're talking to and the companies you're interacting with are companies, and they're kind of on a different time schedule than consumers. So as consumers, we go on Twitter, we, you know, we're on Facebook on our phones, and we check it, and we can check in on things commonly. As small business owners, um, they might only have just like an hour at the end of the day when they're not running their business to check in on things. So um, making sure that the information that you're giving them and the things that you're posting on your across your social channels, your email marketing, um, and keeping in mind. Um, their time commitment, when, like how often they'll be checking things, so what is at the top of their mind, and also not being tone deaf to the fact that they're small business owners versus consumers. Um, so that's always a challenge to try to talk to them as consumers because we are boiling relationships, but at the same time, um, um, one of the things that we came up with, for example, was we're remembering that we're talking to small business owners who might write bitter come orders versus freelancers and entrepreneurs will have different um, needs and expectations. So staying, not being toned up to that is definitely a big challenge for community managers. I think um, for me the biggest thing, and I wish I, there's um, some study out there and I don't have numbers, damn it. 
Um, but I think the biggest thing is the stakes. Uh, so when we use something, we use an app, we use a tool. Um, if it's broken, you know, we may post something somewhere and get mad about it. But if we, uh, if someone as a business owner or as someone that works for the CEO or whatever is on a team and uses an app and proposes it to their team and that app fails and doesn't help their, help them at all, um, then the stakes are so much higher. They might lose their job. You know, they may um, lose face in front of um, their colleagues and that kind of um, and that kind of stuff. And so I think that when you're doing some business um, with some B2B folks, just really helping them along um, and helping them succeed. For me, it was always like, tell me what your needs are. Here's what we can do, but if these don't fit your needs, there are so many times where I told businesses, like, our product isn't actually for you. Um, and it's a really tough thing to say, uh, but having them lose, one, as a community, like a cushy person, you don't want them to lose face um, in front of their team, but also you, you kind of have to, I guess, I don't say fire the customer, but it's, it's that kind of stuff happens as well. Um, so I, I saw that a lot when I was talking to a lot of the B2B folks because you just want them, um, as community people, to just help them do better business and making that decision for them saying, hey, like this product isn't great for you, and then actually tossing out some competitors or some other businesses, I think, um, is some really great community work because it builds that trust. Um, I've had folks actually come back and say, thank you so much for suggesting this other tool. Um, I'd love to have, figure out how to use this tool because I know that you're looking out for me. Um, so having those stakes be so high, I think, is the thing that can be um, a little bit scary as a community person because you want that person to succeed. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point there, Trish. I mean, the, the, the stakes are high, and, and you don't uh, you, you have to keep that in mind that this person is likely coming to you and, and is a part of your community only because their employer, the person that provides them with the, with the roof over their head and food in their belly, is telling them to. And uh, so th they oftentimes don't have, have a choice. You know, somebody else has made that vendor decision uh, for them, and, and that's why they're there. Um, also... The you know you mentioned that, that you don't want to lose face and and um, uh, be seen as you know incompetent by your uh, by your coworkers or whatever you know you you put your uh, you, you really put uh, a lot of effort behind working with a certain company and you want to be successful. Uh, the the nice thing is as a community manager and working with uh, with communities when you can see uh, somebody's project go through to success right and so you can really see them uh, get those kudos from their from their boss you know and and they can um, you know you help them achieve their goal and that's a really great way to uh, it's a really great way to uh, is, you know celebrate your Friday and say hey you know I just uh, found out that uh, so and so had a you know a really great review because of a thing that we worked on together and that's a, a really great thing as a community manager to see What I was going to say before, for me and my experience, the biggest difference between B2B and B2C was that um, in B2B, your you know, community or whatever you call it are actually your customers, you're like your clients. You know, it's a different relationship between like the user of an app like Zumper or a client of Scoopit. And like a lot of times, you know, in the um, in the B two B space, your customers aren't necessarily interested in like participating or doing anything besides like getting the service. Like, look at like, you know, it's I can't think of a good example of this. Happened. Like these the the B two C communities, like people are you know feeling passionate about a company or a topic or whatever it is that's bringing them together, and they're you know they're they're interested in meeting more people around this and like participating in forums and whatever else. But in B2B, it's kind of like, okay, I bought your software for my work and I'm doing that work, but like that's really all I need from you. And I think to me that was kind of the biggest challenge was um, like when I was using community management for B2B marketing, um, most of my like community members weren't even clients of Scoop It. They were just they were like evangelists, you know, because that's the type of person who maybe is more likely to participate in these activities. And I think the biggest barrier for me was kind of getting people to buy in. Like, cool, I bought your software, I use it every day at work. Like, why should I, why should there be a relationship beyond that? And to be honest, I don't really know the answer, so. One of the things that, that I really like um, when it comes to thinking about a 
uh, of B2B is you sort of, at least I've found, is that you sort of have a bit of a camaraderie, I think, um, with your community, like on that level of like, you know, they are just maybe using a software, maybe that's some, what some of the people think, but at the same time, it's like, I'm sitting in an office, you're sitting in an office, we sort of understand each other a little bit there, um, and so, you know, you sort of have that um, at least professional sort of relationship, like the same, you sort of can see on the same page, you know, when they're complaining about something, you know, you have just like a B2C, somebody's complaining about it, uh, they might be a little bit more vocal, they might not, uh, you know, I think of David DeWalt all the time when I think this, but, you know, they, they want to express the issue, they just might not always do it the best way, but then in a B2B, you know, like, they want their, their stuff to work, obviously, but at the same time, like, there's almost a little bit of an understanding there, and so, you know, that's one of the, <clears throat> the differences that I've seen, um, that you could sort of speak to them a little bit of a different way, maybe a little bit more frank, not necessarily on the lowest level, but maybe, you know, a level down, um, or even just on the same level, you know, you could sort of express it. It's like, hey, dude, I just need to get this to work so that my boss can get off of my back, you know, sort of one of those types of things. So, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy that personal part yeah. of it. That's super interesting. I'd actually be curious to hear from Krista about that because I know, Krista, you work in B2B and you're working directly with clients, like, all the time and you have really relationships with them. So, like, you know, what is that experience like for you? Right. Well, there's, I mean, there's obviously like two different kinds of things going on. There's the the community that exists for your, like, your potential customers or people who might just be able to, you know, learn something from your company anyway. But there's also your existing customers that already are there. And at the company I'm at now, it's software as a service. So we have a subscription-based model. And I know who I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I'm working with their, you know, the managers of these teams that are doing a lot of work through our platform uh, to be able to handle social media engagement and customer support in particular. And uh, the biggest difference there is when I was at SHIP or even when I was at MotionLoft and it was more in the prospecting phase of the like pre-sale community, um, it, it was just anything goes. Anybody who's reaching out is, is your community. Um, as you get more into B2B and more defined uh, with who your, your community is, you have certain contacts and then they have their own communities, like little micro communities from there um, that are their teams and you want to make them all successful but you have a main point of contact because if I'm talking to somebody at Delta, I'm not talking to you know every single agent at Delta, that would be mayhem. I have to talk to our, our points of contact there and that's one of the biggest differences. I'm going to uh, quick bring in here. So Jade Phillips, hey Jade, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Jade asks, and I think we're kind of talking about this right now, but maybe somebody has something to add. Uh, her question for the panel is, do you find it difficult to maintain a more relaxed slash human voice within B2B communities? I actually don't because I'm talking to individuals still. And so for me, like as far as tone, that doesn't really change a whole lot for me. I think I actually had an interesting experience with this one where it would not necessarily be difficult to achieve that, but that might not necessarily be the best option. Like, there's, I feel like, you know, there's some instances, I think, where, you know, definitely maintaining, like, the human voice, like, I'm a huge advocate of that, but, like, there is also kind of like a different vibe that you kind of want to set in your B2B community. Maybe, I don't like to depend on what it's for, but like I once worked with a company that, you know, they were like super serious and they didn't, they wanted to like have, you know, dynamic content and community, whatever, but it was very like we need to maintain this brand image and like anything that's being said on behalf of us needs to be in this way. And so, there's definitely, I mean, this isn't really, like, an answer to the question, but just, like, branching off, definitely, like, there's a difference in, like, the expectation in B2B that it might be, like, a little more formal, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think that um, two brands that are doing a really good job at this are Discover. So talking to somebody, like, the way that you talk to yourself, like, we treat you like you treat you kind of 
idea and uh, Buffer, uh, both of them, you know, kind of having both B2C and B2B and being able to smoothly transition between the two. Uh, I was just going to ask if Christopher is for everyone or if that was just me. I was trying to say you guys out and nod my head just in case it was on my end. <laughs> That's I why love, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> I love seeing that too, of like seeing everybody else's little thing and everybody's like looking somewhere and everybody has that confused look that comes back looking at the screen like, uh, what's going on here? Well, hopefully oh, your good. internet comes back in a minute. Uh, let's just jump right into question three while we wait. Hey, Broom, uh, before we yeah. jump, oh, um, yeah. I had a quick note on benchmarking just because we talked a lot about the differences between B2B and B2C. Um, when I did training with Lithium with Joe Cothrell. Um, and one thing he pointed out is that just your your audience ends up looking a bit different. Um, so what kind of happens is you end up, I'm sorry, I'm like totally cheating and looking at my notes here. Um, but if you're looking at targets, looking at community registrations as a percent of the customer base, like B2B ends up being a lot higher. Um, but if you look at them more as a percentage of your website traffic, it ends up being a little bit lower. Um, just because that it's a smaller piece of the pie of the pie because it's account based, but they do tend to be a lot more engaged than your average consumer um, because their job actually depends on it. Like for me, if I have a question about lithium, like I'm working in it every day, I'm using it every day, I'm going to jump on their forums and ask them. Whereas if I have a problem with my phone. I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to keep throwing it at something until it starts working. <laughs> like that's just kind of like the difference in for me anyway, and from what we talked about in the training is the difference between B2B and B2C um, when you're looking at kind of what percentage of people you're dealing with um, from your customer base or from your website. Right on. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, question three is about challenges, right? So. What are some of the biggest challenges you face with the B2B community? As far as the, especially building, right? So if we talk, talk about building community specifically, what's, what's some of the challenges in building in B2B? Is it slower? I, mean, I think that it was, it was sort of touched on a little bit in the, the idea that um, a lot of these people that are in a B2B community, they're not necessarily the decision makers. You know, so it's just sort of inherited that this is a community that they're in. So with that, there's not as much of that personal buy-in. You know, B2C, you have one person, they're making the decision to be in your community. Um, you know, B2B, they're, um, you know, sort of forced. If you want to take a negative connotation, they're, they're forced to be there. So, you know, you have to work a little bit harder with those people um, to be able to show what your value is and why they want to spend their time there. Um, you know, so, you know, that's definitely, uh, it's an opportunity, I mean, you could, I look at it and, you know, I'm an eternal optimist, so I think, oh, any challenge is just actually an opportunity, which it is, but at the same time, it is a challenge. Another challenge, I think, is, um, I'm seeing this, especially when I work with, um, clients who are product-based, um, a lot of the, your community members are actually going to be competitors. So there's a lot of, when you're building your community, that you need to keep in mind of, like, do you need to build in, if you're building a forum, do you need to build in an anonymity because people don't maybe necessarily want to talk about which company they're working with and actually using that product or how they're using that product, depending on what it is. So um, when it's B2B, um, like, when I first saw this question, I was originally thinking of, like, legal and PR, and there's a lot of, like, especially if it's a very technical company, you have to think about a lot of sport, um, but I think another thing is making sure that your members, your the businesses you're selling to and the businesses who are in your community feel safe and feel like it's a safe space for them to come to without compromising the integrity of their company and also um, revealing anything that they don't want to by saying that they use your products. It's like, it's not very common, but I think there are a lot of products or companies that have to keep that in mind, so it's another one of those challenges when you're building that community. Yeah, I was just going to um, just add a little bit to what Dom was saying around, um, 
you know, the people that in your community may not be the influencers. And one of the things really in my last company at VSNAP, um, long-time viewers might have heard me talk about this before, uh, but when people would follow us on Twitter, I would send them a quick video to say thank you. And um, it was actually really cool. So the people that were following us on Twitter may not have been the decision makers, but then when the CEO of my company went to meet with some of the VPs and CEOs of the companies, and they went back to their teams, have you ever heard of this thing? There would always be like everything from an intern to a manager saying, oh yeah, they totally sent me a video on Twitter and they, you end up having these internal evangelists in these decision making meetings. And so I'm not necessarily, as I was building that community, connecting with the influencers directly, but I was um, kind of making sure that we had some evangelists so that when the conversation came to it, there were some people that were already talking um, about it. It didn't, it didn't, that wasn't actually, I would love to say that there was some strategy that, that happened there in the beginning, and it, but it just actually, um, I just wanted to do it because I was like, let's have more videos and products out there. And it was, it, it ended up being really beneficial, but it started off as just me casting a really wide net um, community-wise. And, and other people just retweeting it, and they might have not have been a customer, but they sent it to someone else. So uh, the, the issue with that is it took a little while for us to see that happen in a way that was meaningful. So the challenge there was I wasn't getting, because it ends up being like a long-term sale, um, I wasn't seeing those immediate numbers right off the bat. It was kind of stuff that I had to gather. Um, you know, through word of mouth kind of channels and marking it within their customer profiles because it wasn't like a click type thing that I could um, kind of track through during the relationship. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to uh, just mention real quick, uh, Josh McCormack in, uh, on Twitter mentioned uh, an answer that I think is a really good one to, to bring up here. So what the answering that what's in it for me question. And I think that's one that a lot of people, um, you know, again, these are all uh, people that are representing the, uh, the business that you're working with. And, uh, you know, we've already mentioned before, Dom, you mentioned it again, that the, um, they might not be the decision makers. They might be tasked on a project, and uh, you know somebody else created this project and knows everything. And then that person is on vacation, or um, you know, or has left the company, or whatever. And now they're trying to figure out, you know, why should I a uh, continue using this this vendor that we have, and and you know, b how do I do this if I do choose to do that? And so uh, there's a there's a big question of you know what do I need to know? Where where do I need to go to find it? And uh, you know what's in it for me to keep going on with this, uh, with this uh, business, uh, this other business that somebody else has created a relationship for. And so that's one of those things where you have a, a brand new uh, opportunity to to completely impress somebody, to send out that uh, video on Twitter, right? That uh, that shows off, um, you know how uh, how well you can treat your customers, and you can really start to to build those relationships there. And it's a uh, it's uh, those are oftentimes. Uh, more challenging, but they can also yield the biggest rewards whenever you get that right. So what do you guys, uh, what do you think are some of the advantages to building a B2B community? Well, I think it's important if you are an enterprise software company because you're not going to be selling software to individuals. Um, I've had that experience at both Motion Loft and Spark Central. So it was great to build a community of people who were talking about your product, but like you need customers too um, in order for your product to thrive and your company to continue. So I think that that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest differences and biggest advantages too. Yeah, I think one of the biggest advantages that I've seen just across the board is um, people are talking about your company, whether they're users or they want to be using it. So um, whether it's a very technical company like an enterprise level product um, or it's one of my former clients was Fluke. So um, they built like tools that people have been using for 40 years, handed down generations. We had people who were like, as soon as they turned 16, they got like their dad's fluke tool when they became like went to electrician school or something. So um, there is that legacy that you're creating. And um, it's also another forum for you to connect with your customers and take it to the next level of 
you're not just a sales point, you're not just a data point. We do care about your experience. We do care about, you know, how you're using our product, how it's helping you, and how much further can we help you with what we're doing. Um, so it's making them feel appreciated, even if it's B2B, even if it's um, big companies that are using your enterprise level product or somebody who's grew up hearing about your product, they want to use it in their business, how can they do it? So it's definitely there are levels of benefits of creating that B2B community. Kind of just a little bit of background of why I threw that question in there um, is when I was researching around, I found a post actually from Brian Fanzo and he was talking about how it seemed like a lot of B2B communities didn't really, or B2B companies didn't really understand the importance of having a community um, and that they were maybe a little bit more behind on technology involved around that. Um, and I think Trish, actually your article mentioned something along those lines as well. And a few other things I said or a few other things I saw were showing that they were just more private communities. So I don't know, like, is is that perception coming from we're just not aware of these communities as much because they're behind a closed door? Um, or is it because they don't fully understand the advantage of having one? Or is it sometimes just not the right fit? It's just some context on the question. I don't know if that gets a few more answers flowing there or not. I almost think that part of it is just the, can just be the verbiage, like the word community versus like talking to a salesperson, they'd be like, well, that's just like a customer success relationship or that's just, sometimes there isn't the understanding of what it is and it's just like, well, community is not just customers, but there's a lot of stuff that I do that you could say that um, there's, at one point I was just like, I'm not a salesperson, like don't call me a salesperson. But like I am part of the sales process and there's things that I do that I follow up with that are beneficial for sales even if it's just me being me and wanting to send a pie to a customer because they've done their 500, 500 interaction whatever um, I still get a high five from the sales for like that was brilliant that you did that I'm like I just did it because they told me their favorite pie was blueberry and they did this really awesome thing so I wanted to send it um, so I sometimes think when I'm talking to people um, sometimes I don't even use the word community. I find out what they do first and try to use the language that they have um, just because, again, there are these, these communities that don't have forums and they don't have um, some of the, the traditional things we think about some B2C communities um, and the language can sometimes be different. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that um, our marketing and sales team used to tell me that they loved me at conferences because by the time people got to their actual table in the uh, in the showroom, they had already heard so much about us and loved us that they could just jump right into the pitch. So, um, it's community building is definitely a part of it. That relationship building where people associate the name of your brand positively it makes a huge difference for the entire sales process for sure. I think the other thing too, I mean, when, when you think about it, you know, with B2B communities, these, <laughs> when you're working with businesses, like the people that you're working with, their friends are typically people that are in similar positions at other companies. Um, so if, if you have a community, like you're creating those evangelists that are going to end up being hopefully members of your community as well, you know? Like, you know, I could talk to Sherry about Rackspace and how awesome Alan is. If she doesn't use it, the next time she's in some sort of a conversation with her boss, be like, yeah, I heard Rackspace is pretty cool. And, you know, next thing you know, like the decision makers are talking to Alan and that type of stuff happens. It's like you want to make friends with the people that are friends with other people that want to be customers. That sounds super rambly, but I think you guys get, get the point. No, that, that's absolutely true, and, and uh, you know, I can... Uh, you know, say that we do get a, a decent amount of our um, uh, of our business is directly through word of mouth, and so um, it's very important for us to do that, um, especially when, when we look at this uh, you know uh, more fluid economy and, and career path, right? So um, you know, 20 years ago, people stuck at a job for their life, and now we're at the point where uh, you know people hop around from career to career. 
um, and uh, from job to job in different in different companies. So if you take somebody that is a uh, either a freelancer or, or jumping around from company to company, it's great to have a, a very strong working relationship, a very strong community of people um, who, as they move into a new role within the same company or a new um, a, a new career at a different company, they can say, "Hey, I, I really uh, really love Rackspace. I really love the way that they." Um, you know, sent me pizza that one time when uh, I tweeted about the fact that uh, we were going to be stuck all night in a maintenance. You know, things like that. They remember that, and and they um, and that comes up when it's time to make that decision, and when people say, "Hey, who should we go to for this specific um, uh, for the specific function?" Well, yeah, I, I remember I had a good experience at my previous job or three jobs ago or whatever it was. Uh, you you really remember that relationship and that. Um, is is a great thing for uh, for the uh, I guess the first B in the B two B I'm not sure uh, which which B it is but uh, it uh, works for well for all the Bs. Yeah, just to, just to like ham like I wanted to give like audible snaps to that um, just because moving from my last kind of B snap to this job um, I just had an event and then I really quickly was able to get a sponsorship and um, someone was like oh like this company must have been following us they must like love us. And we were talking, we were like, no, I actually worked with Trish at my last job, and at her last job, it didn't really make sense for us to sponsor any of the events because it was more, you know, this B2B kind of community. So now it makes sense for us to do it. And I just kind of, like, followed her. And so it was just one of those really interesting, and, and the, one of the, another reason why we need to be thinking about this age to age is everyone has such an incredible personal brand, um, especially the community folks, that um, you want to be making sure that, hey, I might not work with you now, but I probably might work with you three companies from now, so like, how can I help you? So I kind of default with like, yeah, I might not be doing this person now, but let me see how I can help them so that when I'm you know, getting to this other place, maybe we can work together in the future and continuing to build those relationships um, because a lot of the community folks that I know have just continued um, and grown in the community role and just found some other, some other roles to go into. I love that. And then thinking about that specifically with like this community too, like I know it's maybe a little off, but but like thinking of the community of my community manager, like when I first started doing this, I worked for a completely separate company, and then I ended up leaving that company, getting work with Sherry's old company, and then also with Brew's company, and then two other people that I know that are always in the chat now work with BTC. You know, I think that there's probably half of this panel, I've seen them on other community manager panels with different job titles underneath. So that whole idea of like the B2B and us building in with each other's businesses uh, outside of this community but in our other communities is huge. And it really is. It's very H to H and it's also talking what Alan said that the fluidity of, of this culture and that it doesn't seem as hyper competitive as companies might have been in the 90s or the early 2000s. Like people really realize the value of working together and having, you know, this <laughs> It's so corny, but the synergistic abilities of companies when they actually decide to work together instead of against each other um, is is really awesome. Synergy. Yeah, just building on that one last point before you guys move on to the next question. Um, one of my favorite things as a community manager, just obviously, and as a connector, is um, seeing small businesses get to know each other in a way that they might not be able to. So when you create a B2B community, you're also you're not just building a community with your business and your customers, you're building it with like them and get them getting to know each other. So um, yeah. But just wanted to say that. Right on. Well uh, let's keep us on track here for time. We'll move along to question number five which is, uh, um, I almost said, you're lucky I'm a lightweight. Uh, that was above the question I was supposed to read. Um, which companies do you see excelling at B2B communities? So who's doing a good? Who's doing a good job? Who's doing a great? Nobody is doing a great. Oh, I think great. this one is really, is really difficult to answer, and I think it almost goes into uh, the next question. So... I'll do a little like preview of that. Yeah, well, you I can think totally that this, portion like, out of the next question. That's fine. Right. I think the biggest uh, so question six being why do you think uh, some companies struggle with building B two B communities? Uh, and and I think that that is it. Just comes down to it's really difficult to tell from an outsider perspective. If I'm not actually that second B in this B two B. 
I might not know. I might say, okay, they're super engaging on social media. Uh, they, you know, have a forum online where I'm able to look up answers and communicate, talk to some other people. That's great and everything, but most of B2B community stuff is, is happening for your paying customers um, if you're, you know, a larger scale company. And so it's, it's just really difficult to say, like, this is a brand that's really nailing B2B uh, if they don't also have B2C offerings. Uh, you can say that they're, you know, engaged, that they're, they're tweeting, they're replying to Facebook messages, but um, unless, unless you're actually part of that community um, internally, then it's hard to say. So I would say uh, some companies that I've been working with as far as being that second business, the one where I'm the client and not the vendor, would be uh, Client Success and uh, Wiseline are two really great examples of uh, companies that, that, you know, have really good B2B communities, but they're brand spanking new, and they're just getting things up and running, so I'm really excited to see where that's going, but um, I would say, like, the larger companies, you know, Salesforce, I don't know what their community looks like. I'm a, I'm a user on a daily basis, um, but other than, like, tweeting at them, I don't know how to get in touch without going through my online marketing and operations manager. I think that's really interesting what you said about kind of being on the inside, like being a client of the B2B. Is like, I, I'm not really a part of any B2B communities, so I don't really know like from that perspective, and I think that it is like a really important perspective. But I, if I had to call out one company, I would say Marketo does a really great job um, on like just, you know, combining like, content, community, and marketing all together. I mean, obviously, they're like the marketing masters, and they should be, but, um, you know, their events are amazing, and, like, they have a whole, their whole, like, online certification and, like, the classes and things like that. And I think that's kind of, like, the best, like, you know, for these, like, software companies, like, having this, like, education part is, like, I think the best way to kind of like get your community started because like that's the value you can bring kind of going back to what I was saying before like most people they buy your software they're a user of it but they're not really interested in like participating in anything else because like it's just a part of their job like you know I log into Marco and I like send my emails and that's like I don't care but like having that education and then like now it's like a fake that people are like Marketo certified and like that's like brilliant marketing because now people have this like on their LinkedIn and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I think starting from the education side, and this is also kind of what Sherry said before, like the training I think is really uh, a really great way to kind of, you know, get that buy-in. And I, I think Marketo does a really great job. Anyone else doing a good job? I just hate when that happens. <laughs> Ellie and the eels. When I say a long, when I say a long thing and nobody says anything, I'm just like. Time to bring those Buzzfeed eels back. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, all right. Uh, check the box. Guess we answered all of those. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, eels look like they always just told a joke. There's, there's, there's a lot of obvious. I think. Um, Ones that we're even involved in here, like um, Hootsuite, has B2B and B2C, um, but they're really good at building community, and I've always felt very involved in a part of that. Um, which, going back to what, who else, someone mentioned that here, it might have been Trish, I can't remember, but like I started using their software again because of how they were, how involved they were in CMG or Hangout, and I got to know the team, and I was like, all right, all right, I'll give it another try, because I had given up on it previously. Um, <laughs> but they do a really great job of it. Um, another B2B community I'm involved in that I already mentioned is Lithium, and I think they do a really good job with it as well, watching them. Um, Barack, actually, your B2B community is super great. I know I've stocked it, which I've told you before, um, because I also work with small business merchants um, and just kind of looking at how you've put together guidelines and how you're curating conversations and hosting hangouts. Um, there's a lot. I think actually that are doing well. It's just a matter of, as Krista said, if you're not a part of their community, you're probably not as aware that it exists. 
Yeah, and go, thank you for that. But and also going back to what Krista said, a lot of B two B companies um, will start with private forums. So even if you're not like even before they start publicly really being building the community, and they'll start with the beta users because I've done that a lot with my smaller like software clients where we'll have like a beta user group before we even talk about um, creating a social presence, um, or we'll have the social presence of. B2C, consumer facing, kind of building the brand, but the actual community building is in private. Um, so I think that those are, that's why it's hard to think about, unless you use a product, unless you know community managers who are B2B, um, it's hard to point, pinpoint the ones that are doing it well. Um, but yeah, you guys made all great points. I just, that's, I think that's the important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of smaller companies, or like even the bigger ones, will keep their B2B communities more private. Um, out of respect, like I said earlier, for the privacy of their clients because um, sometimes it's very um, sensitive information that they're talking about and supporting. So. All right, so let's it's tip time. Um, so just one tip uh, because we got a lot of people here. Um, hashtag tip time. Uh, so um, all right, so just give us a tip on What's your number one tip for building B2B communities? Be helpful, right? Um, if you can help, uh, you're going to uh, win over uh, the people that represent the uh, customers, the uh, you know the, the businesses, right? Um, and to expand on that, it, dig deep to find out what you can do proactively to be helpful, right? So don't just um, it's great to be reactively helpful. I mean, that's that's a great thing. But if you can try to figure out, hey, what are some of the uh, questions that people have, um, that people are asking in the in the forums that we have? What are some of the searches that they uh, that they start but get zero results for? Right. So try to find out what people are um, uh, what people are looking for and try to proactively answer that. Because if you can answer that before they ever have that question, you look amazing to them. Um, and uh, they love that. They are uh, promoters for life. Yeah, I think building on that, um, I was going to say listen, but um, in addition to listening, use your own product. So you know what, like be a customer of your own product so you know what the pain points are going to be um, that you're trying to solve for your customers and the businesses that you're working with and get feedback and give feedback to them and say, here's what we're working on. Um, you know, what other feature would benefit you or what's your biggest pain point and ask them those questions and uh, that'll go a long way. If you're not just the face, like the community manager while building the community, you're actually a user of the product so you know the bugs and everything else that they're, deal they're dealing with and you have a better perspective on how to help them. I'll jump in as well. Um, I think that my number one tip for building B2B communities is get your community together in person as often as possible. Um, that does so much more than you know any online interactions or engagements. If I get my customers together and they start talking, they, they know who they are after that and they're going to continue that conversation. Last year at our customer experience summit we got all of our airlines sitting there together and it was so cool to see JetBlue and Delta and WestJet and Emirates and all of these other airlines talking about like here are our best practices and this year like we're even more excited uh, to, to get you know not just our existing customers but you know some potential future customers as well in on the conversation. Me, I think that uh, something that I would want to kind of <laughs> remind uh, you in the chat. Um, so what I would say is I just lost my train of thought. I'm really sorry. I'm distracted by the the hangout chat. <laughs> oh yeah, um, B2B communities. Your community doesn't necessarily have to all be your users. 
And I think that's something, you know, it's kind of like opposite of what we were talking about before of how like the best users, now you guys are just making it worse. Um, we were talking about how the best use, the best community members are the users of your problem. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> um, <laughs> They're just typing random words into the side chat <laughs> in all caps. Okay, but anyway, you can have community members who aren't necessarily users of your products, and that can be extremely beneficial to you. Don't forget it. Now everybody, leave me alone. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great tip. Um, expanding beyond just the users. Who else has a tip? We got time for uh, three more. Probably tips, a minute each. What are you laughing at, Dom? Synergy. Nothing. Not laughing at anything. I just, I just love it. Um, I, I, here, I, I have a, a, a quick tip. Um, <clears throat> might not even take a minute. Uh, but I think that uh, the. The thing for me is just to be the connector between the other businesses. It's sort of like taking uh, over what, what Krista said um, in that, you know, when you want to try to get the people in, meet them in person, um, I think that in the community you want to do a very good job of, like, being that connector of people in your community, um, which obviously is, like, very much the community manager role. But at the same time, when B2B is, like, you see that somebody's what somebody's doing, and if it's something that your company can't help, but you see that another company, another you know, B in your B to B can help out that other B, <clears throat> you know, be the two in the middle of that B to B. Um, I'm just trying to be confusing now, but uh, you know, getting that that whole thing together, I think, is really uh, is important because you're going to grow relationships a lot more, and it's taking it outside of what you have to do. Um, and sort of going that extra mile, you're going to have a lot of, of uh, happier clients. You're going to have a deeper relationship with them, and they're going to think of you that next time. Um, when it comes to that word of mouth, you know, that's stuff that's kind of hard to prove um, where those relationships might come from, but at the same time, they're ones that, that are going to overall help your, your business a lot. They're going to give you a lot more worth when you talk about you trying to talk to, you know, those actual decision makers, the ones who sign your paycheck. Drop mode. So uh, I will end this with the best Twitter uh, comment. Experts.com says, uh, Allie Greer, House of Brew, we have learned a great deal, but Allie's inability to to speak has made us smile. Thank you. So I, I thought that was just cute. That was a great way to just wrap things up, put a little bow on it. Oh, God. Uh, Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> Happy Friday. Um, all right, guys. So, Sherry, what do we have going on next week? Be amazed because I actually know. Next right. week we are talking about community manager self-care. Um, Evan Hamilton is joining us for sure, and I have a couple other invites as well. But if that's a burnout, self-care, and whatnot for community management is a huge topic for you, just let me know, um, and we'll have some space. Oh, that'll be a good one. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on a Friday. Um, have an excellent weekend, probably one of the last weekends of summer. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next Friday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>